And welcome into To Your Health. We're very happy again to have with us Dr. Tom Gary from the Alabama Department of Public Health. We had a very interesting segment about advanced directives, and today you're talking about another law that involves physicians. What is this right. new law? This is an amendment to the Alabama Natural Death Act that just okay. passed the last session. And for the first time in Alabama history, the Natural Death Act now talks about something that we are all familiar with, that we've heard about for years, and that's an order by a physician that says, do not resuscitate. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is part of the uh, planning that we should all think about uh, as we age. We should think about, do we want to be resuscitated if our heart stops and we stop breathing? Mm -hmm. So over the years, there's been no statute, no law that spoke to the order by a physician to do not resuscitate. And I can tell you from personal experience, this can be very, very touchy. If a person is known to have uh, terminal cancer in the hospital and they're not uh, ready to die this instant, so they need to be moved to a facility like a nursing home or assisted living or even home mm -hmm. where they, their care can be continued. The order that the doctor wrote in the hospital never went with them to the nursing home. So the nursing home had to start over from the very beginning. As you <laughs> mentioned in the last segment, the question is, well, do you have an advanced directive? Well, did you bring it with you? And on mm -hmm. and on. Well, the, uh, the legislature has been considering uh, this type of amendment to the Natural Death Act for years. But finally, we were able to get the language right so that they assigned a task to the Department of Public Health to develop a form that would be a portable physician's do not attempt resuscitation form. That if it is properly completed, in one institution, it transfers with Great. the patient mm -hmm. to that makes sense. any other facility anywhere in the state. So, you know, you can't be certain under the old situation that the doctor out in the country in North Alabama really talked to the patient and the family and made it clear mm -hmm. what this order meant. Now, with this uh, form that's been vetted and uh, established by the Department of Public Health, when it's properly completed, it will transfer anywhere in the state with a person who uh, does not want to be resuscitated. Mm -hmm. And the, the way the amendment is written, the event of cardiac arrest and pulmonary arrest immediately uh, puts a person in the state, in a terminal state, and permanent unconsciousness. So, as opposed to before this amendment, this form accomplishes everything that we've needed. We've needed a way for people who were simply uh, very old in their 90s, um, had a good life, did not want to be resuscitated, but they didn't have a terminal diagnosis and mm -hmm. they weren't permanently unconscious. Well there was no way for them to actually implement that desire until now. Mm. Now they can make their wishes known, the doctor can sign that, and it's a valid form that transfers with them any place that they go. And the reason for that is if your heart and lungs stop, you are in a terminal state, permanently unconscious, mm -hmm. But there isn't time for a second opinion, right. for people to get another doctor involved. It's either you get resuscitated or you, you don't. don't. Yeah. So this has been a gift by the legislature mm -hmm. to all of the people in Alabama. I used to have folks write a letter with their attorney saying that if you resuscitated me and you were successful, we would sue you for 
uh, oh. inappropriate <laughs> life. And if you were unsuccessful, we would file charges of abuse. Oh. Oh my that was the only way that yeah. somebody who was competent could make the uh, nursing homes and the hospitals not do resuscitation because that's our fallback position. Right. Mm -hmm. If somebody doesn't have an advanced directive, they don't have an order, well, we want to do everything, and that's our obligation to do everything. This sort of lets everybody relax, take a deep breath mm -hmm. and relax, and we can have our wishes known. And if a person is not able to speak for themselves, then they're appointed proxy and their advanced directive and, uh, and a power of attorney who has the right medical <coughs> affairs uh, powers or a surrogate decision maker, which is also mm -hmm. in this law, can be the one to sign this portable do not resuscitate order and it transfers from facility to facility. It can work in the home setting uh, it is now recognized as the form for emergency medical services. They used to have their own form, and it was very complicated. But now, with this amendment to the Natural Death Act, this form signed by one physician uh, and appro appropriately signed either by the individual or their proxy attorney, in fact, will suffice to prevent EMS from actually doing CPR if they happen to be mm -hmm. called to the home or to an assisted living facility uh, at, at the end of someone's life. Well, I that's think great. That's we, we have, yep. And you know, Jack and I were talking real quickly. That is such a gift to the family. Yes. Because that's, the, that's your opportunity mm -hmm. to let your family know what you want so that burden really is not on them that's, that's right. right and it, they can do it, what you want it's a it's lifting it. of a burden it is it allows the family to be supportive mm -hmm. to provide love and comfort and the last part of this portable do not resuscitate order after where it says the physician signs for uh, no cardiopulmonary resuscitation no uh, shocking of the heart or anything it says but uh, I instruct that comfort care be given to the patient uh, and support to the family and other caregivers because you know right. Uh, That's right. the people in the nursing homes mm -hmm. the nurses in the hospitals the uh, caregivers under hospice the volunteers right. everyone gets very attached to people mm -hmm. right. and they too need the care and comfort and support at end of life that uh, everyone has. Yeah. Well, thank you so much and just remember as we learned early on the Alabama Department of Public Health is here for you go to their site and you can find out about everything that Dr. Gary has discussed in the past two segments and we'll be right back right after this.